Hello, and welcome to this bonus hiatus episode of Not a Lady, a Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman podcast. My name is Kelly. And I'm Sarah. And today we're attempting to answer your season one trivia. How confident do you feel about season one trivia, Kelly? Not gonna lie, don't feel great. Not because I think we don't know things, but we've been on a little bit of a hiatus, been on a little break, so I feel like I'm a little farther removed from some of these episodes than I'd care to admit. (laughs) Yeah, same. This was something we planned on including as part of our roundup episode, but we ended up having so many good things to talk about in the roundup that we were like, we're gonna just do this as a separate bonus. So, do you want to take even and I'll take odd, or do you want to take odd, I'll take even? You're the odd one, so I'll let you cover that. (gasps) Wow. Snaps. (laughs) Dad jokes. (laughs) That was great, actually. All right. Our first question is about everyone's favorite episode. In Father's Day, where is Dr. Mike's quote-unquote surprise package coming from? That's the stethoscope. No, the stethoscope was in Heroes. Right, so what package? I don't even remember what package. Well, okay, this is what I do remember. What I remember is that Ethan Cooper is helps her carry helps her carry a package out of the post office because I remember us talking about like, remember when she told Sully like she didn't need his help and he was like, just took it. But then Ethan Cooper was like, let me carry this for you. And then she just let him and we were like, rude. Sure. Part of me is like, I don't know, Denver. That seems too easy, though. <laughs> Do we have the answers to these? <laughs> yeah, we're not off to a good start. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. This is the episode with about the smallpox vaccination. Was it the vaccination from Denver? Chicago? I don't, she hasn't written to that many places. St. Louis, Chicago, yeah. Denver, <laughs> New York. <laughs> Boston occasionally. Yeah, I don't know. Do we want to look up the right answers when we don't know? We probably should because how... the, the, the people want to know. Go in your notes. I'm sure you'll have it in your notes. You're right. You're right. Well, you're more likely to have it in your notes than me, let's be honest. I wrote post office. Ethan and Horace, they're talking about how much money they have for the school. Dr. Mike lets him take the package. That's what I write, wrote. Mm-hmm. Chicago, it's an outfit. An outfit. It must be for the Founders Day. Oh. Okay, but I did say Chicago, so. (laughs) (laughs) You did say Chicago. We'll give you the credit, although there's really, like we said, only four or five cities you can say. (laughs) Yeah. We we should should keep, let's keep a tally on which ones we get. I just thought about that. That's a good idea. Why do you got to make everything so competitive? (laughs) It's not competitive. It's just to make it more interesting. No, it's to make it so you're like, I got 12 out of 12 right. (laughs) We're both going to get this next one. You ready? What color did Olive forbid the girls to wear at the hurdy-gurdy? Three, two, one. Red. Red. (laughs) Yes. Can't forget that. Scandalous. What musical instrument do Horace and Jake play in the town band? This would be in The Prisoner. I don't remember what jake plays but horace plays the little brown jug (laughs) yes i'm pretty sure that jake plays an uh accordion that feels right because then you add lauren with the harmonica it's like the perfect historic little band (laughs) yes what about this one oh gosh this is gonna send you off into a rant (laughs) for alice's birthday party who were the girls going to dress up as yeah lily langtree and pocahontas Correct. And then, of course, Colleen was going to be Florence Nightingale. Florence. Correct. Did you remember that? I didn't, we didn't give you a chance to. No, I remembered Pocahontas. I remember the other one started with an L, and I remember the story about her, but I don't, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that was her name. I forgot her yeah. name. Yeah. How much did the bank want for Charlotte's boarding house? Oh. Good question. Why do I feel like it was like. Say what? I feel like it was like ten thousand. That seems like a lot, though. <laughs> it was, I thought it was like ten something. <laughs> I want to say it was either 1000 or 800 and her mom either, she asked her mom for 500 or 400 but I can't quite remember, so I'm going to look it up. This I definitely wrote down. Yeah. Mrs. Quinn eventually gives Dr. Mike $500 so she can purchase. 
Can you hear the rooster? It sounds like like squeaking. I didn't really know what that was. It's the roosters. 1,500, actually. She has 1,000. Yeah, 1,500 is what I wrote in my notes. She has 1,000. She asked her mom for 500. Okay, we were both wrong. Good job. <laughs> what about... This, oh, I heard it that time. <laughs> what was the title of the serialized story the girls were reading in the weekly? Bonus, if you can remember the hero and the heroine. Ooh. The hero. <laughs> I said the hero. The hero and the heroine. The hero. Rocky Mountain Heroes. Correct. Don't tell me. Carolina. Ooh, good job. And don't tell me. I know this guy's name. Because <laughs> she reads it so uh, dramatically. She, yeah. And she says it to Sully, like, you're my... Colt. 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 Good job. Good job. All right, you get Carolina. You get Colt. two points for that one. I'll get one because I, I don't know that I would remember the names, but I knew the name of the story. Okay, story. What is the name of Horace's nephew and where is he from? We love Lewis. We do. Can't forget Lewis. Although, where is he from? Yeah. St. Louis? <laughs> is Lewis from St. Louis? <laughs> he is. Let's. I'm saying he is. Let's just leave it at that. I want to be like, they can't live too far away because I was thinking of Horace's mom, but we don't actually know for sure that where his parents, Horace's, I guess, sibling. We don't know if he's his brother or sister's kid, do we? I don't think we do. That might be something we learn later. Oh, But it also doesn't... Where Lewis is from. It's not St. Louis? It's not. Is it Kansas... Wait, what? Wait. I was going to say Kansas City was my other guess. Okay, he is from Kansas. Yes. Not, I don't know if he's... Just Kansas. I don't know if he... I wrote well, down City is... Kansas, but I don't know okay. if he's... He could be from Kansas City, but my notes just say Kansas. We'll take it. That makes sense. Kansas is next to Colorado. You get a point for that. Well, I don't know <laughs> if I knew, but I'll take it. What about this one? When Doc Eli visits Michaela's clinic for the first time, who are the patients there? I remember this one. Go for it. Wolf and Franklin. Doc Eli comes in and he's like, interesting clientele because he sees Wolf. Oh, good. Um, I don't think I get any points because I didn't remember. I was thinking it was probably an animal because I remember him making like a comment, but I knew it wasn't the pig because that was from... Visitor. The visitor. Yeah. Yeah. So... Which actually, interesting thing, someone wrote in like a week ago about that episode. Like, I guess they're just listening and they wrote in to let us know that there was a line in the visitor... Dr. Mike was in the mercantile and someone asked her how some farmer's pig was doing. And Dr. Mike replies, I didn't realize how smart pigs are. And they were like, that's pro- the pig that was in the clinic. Right. I saw that comment or it was an email. I did see yeah. that now that you say that. And I was like, oh, wow. I kind of do remember that. And didn't I never made that connection. So next question from Father's Day again. How much did the quilt sell for in the auction raising money for the schoolhouse? And who was the winning bidder? I know for sure it was Harriet's husband because it was the last thing she worked on. Right. Couldn't tell you the price. $80. It's weird because I was thinking it was 40 or 80 yeah. So don't give me a point for that. But <laughs> um, interesting that I randomly... Wow. There's a follow-up question of what other prizes were offered in the auction. Mm, I don't remember. Smallpox vaccinations from Dr. Mike. <laughs> Everyone was really ecstatic about that. Jake offered... Haircuts. For a month? I'm actually not sure how long of a time. I don't remember any others. Yeah, me neither. Ooh. When Brian goes blind, what does he drop? I remember. Do you remember? Yeah. It's the eraser. Good job. Yep. Yeah, the eraser that uh, Lauren was using for the blueprint. Yep. I love that episode. I mean, it's our number one, so... (laughs) (laughs) What is... The name of Cloud Dancing's wife. We only saw her for literally one scene, but we love her. Yes, and she will be back. No spoilers, but um, that would be Snowbird. You know why else I feel like I could never forget Snowbird's name? is because mom loves her. Yeah, that's true. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> this one is yours. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Evans, remember? I'm in <laughs> Stay I'm in your odd. place. How is Olive related to Lauren? Bad news, Kelly. I don't remember. <gasps> Are you joking? 
Are you serious? <laughs> I'm joking. I said, "Are you are you joking?" And you like laughed, and I'm like, "Oh, she's joke. She's not joking." I know. <laughs> All right. So who is it? She is his younger sister. Is that true? Lauren and Olive. Yes. <laughs> are you joking now? Yes, you are. Wow, you're better at this than me. <laughs> Ooh, let's see how much you actually listen to me. What illness does... Oh, it's an odd one. This is yours. Stay in your lane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what illness does Kid Cole have, a.k.a. Johnny Cash? I do know. Yeah? Consumption. Also known as? Oh. Also known as... Why do I want to say CPD? I don't even know what that stands for. <laughs> Consumption, also known as... I don't know. People still get tests for it today, like if they start a new job usually or something. Oh, tuberculosis. Correct. That's a half point because you had help. <laughs> yeah. What about this one? I'll be, I'll be shocked if one of us... Well, you probably will because... Anyway, um, <laughs> what year did Michaela graduate from medical school? Here's the thing. I know when she tells us. She tells us when Doc Eli asked, like, when she asked him where he went to school. Credentials, yeah. And then he says, where did you go? And she says something about women's something something. I know she was born in 1833. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember the year. I remember her saying the year. And I feel like we probably would have talked about it because we usually talk about any time they actually give us a year because we're always so confused. Yeah, I'm always so com- trying to figure out the timeline of this show. <laughs> oh, I found it. Graduated from Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania in 1860. I wrote down his graduation date, 1948. Yeah, neither one of us get a point for that one. How old is Dr. Mike turning in happy birthday. See, like, I remember us having this massive discussion <laughs> about, like, oh, this is this is what they she said, but then this is, if you do the math, isn't it, like, 35? Yes, it is 35. Well, and it wasn't that her age was wrong. It was just confusing because they said in the pilot, they said she was born in February. And so the timeline of the end of the pilot, which is Christmas, and then supposedly her first birthday, which seemed to be midsummer, that was, I was like, there should have been either, it's only been like a month, and somehow it's very sunny in in February in Colorado, or their timeline is not right. (laughs) Their seasons are weird. Right. Colleen reads a book about matrimony. What professions does it give examples when choosing a partner oh yeah this is a good question the only one i remember is clergymen yeah that's what makes them think to go talk to the reverend yep. i don't remember any of the others that were possibly mentioned do you i want to say like there was also doctor because we were like joking like oh she's the doctor <laughs> <laughs> yeah she is um yeah i can't say i remember the others that is a good question though who suggests that grace open a cafe All right, in the room was Colleen, Grace, Robert E., Olive, and Brian. Those were the people in the room. I believe Brian is the one who said, you should call it Grace's Cafe. Is he also the one who just said, you should open a cafe, or was it Robert E.? I'm not sure. I kind of, I think Robert E. is the one that's like, oh, you could have it in the space behind the livery or something like that. I don't really know. I think it was kind of a group suggestion. Yeah, but but someone does say you could open a cafe. Yeah. Who walked into the general store with Sully in the pilot where he tomahawked the no dogs or Indian sign? I know which one it is. Do you remember? Yes, I do. There's only really two options, right? (laughs) Right, either... Black Kettle or Cloud Dancing? Who is it? Chief Black Kettle. It is Black Kettle. Actually, you want to know something crazy? Let's pause for a minute. We're talking about the pilot. It is currently August 2021. We recorded our the pilot episode in August of 2020, and it went out in September. So it's actually been a year since we've talked about that episode. Yeah, I believe that, <laughs> based on my uh, remembering. 
Who? Which Native American was the first to see if Brian was okay in the pilot? Oh. Meaning, meaning after the leg thing happened? First to see if Brian was okay in the pilot. I know, like, when they meet up with the Cheyenne. I know they go to look for him. Yeah, they, they go to help look for him and stuff. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. I s- felt like she was a little aggressive because they go to check on him, and she's like, he's fine. <laughs> she, like, pushes them away. I'm going to guess that it's Larry Sellers as, because he technically wasn't cloud dancing in that episode. He was Black Hawk. I'm going to, like, guess that it was him, but actually, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. But I do remember now that that when they meet back up with the Cheyenne rescue party, that she like pushes them away and is like, he's fine. <laughs> good question. That's like, yeah. That is a good one. Can't, I can't really like picture it, but I know you can. If we watched it back, I would, I would know where to look. But who brought the army to search for Brian in the pilot? I like vaguely remember like Matthew yeah. going to look. She leaves Colleen and Matthew at the homestead to go look for Brian when he runs off. She tells them to stay. And then she obviously gets lost and doesn't come back. We don't see a scene, but there's an assumption they went into town and then Colonel Shivington is there and Matthews, they see the Indians and he's like, no, don't attack the Indians. Like, we're looking for my brother. Yeah, so it is Matthew. The correct answer is Matthew. Sweet. What did Dr. Mike use for a trach tube in the pilot? I just want to say what the question is actually, yeah, asking about the tracheotomy, what tool was used for the tracheotomy. Trach tube is like an actual thing, which I guess that's what this person is trying to say. So that he can breathe when she goes in to cut the bullet out. Correct. Do you remember? Because I do remember. I do. It's a feather. Correct. Kind of hard to forget that. <laughs> I think I said in the roundup, it's like, it's one of my favorite medical yeah, moments. Definitely. What gift did Sully give to Colleen for Christmas in the pilot? Combs. I think we said like bone or wood combs. Because I was thinking of the hairbrush that she gets from her grandma. And I'm like, it's not a hair thing. What did he give her? But now that you say that, yeah. Of course, what did her dad give her? Did her dad give her combs? Or was it like a hair clip? (laughs) This is a little sexist. The only thing people ever get Colleen are (laughs) hair things. I mean... I mean, she does have pretty hair, but... It's the 1800s. What What president... mm, This is your question, history question. Which president did Black Kettle think he was friends with because he was given a flag? I think if you would guess, you would probably get it right. (laughs) Don't say that because I don't know. The order of the presidents I'm not great about, so, like, I might embarrass myself if I guess. <laughs> Which presidents have we talked about in this? We J- talked about Johnson, Lincoln. Lincoln. About... I mean, we've talked about a lot in, in just historical context. Is it? Right, but in this, basically what happens is he's given a flag, but then there's a different president yep. at this point. Yep. Uh, is it Lincoln? It is Lincoln, yeah. Okay, that's, like, the main one I remember talking about. Two points for us. This is your, this is the one, like, you said me, you had help. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of flowers did Sully suggest during the flu epidemic? They run out of quinine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For bringing yeah. down fevers. So he suggests something else that the, the Cheyenne use. I'm, it's purple. <laughs> The only flowers we're talking about is foxgloves, and that was with digitalis, which has nothing to do with this. That has to do with AFib. Purple flowers? Again, it's been a year since we talked about this episode. Honestly, yeah, I'm going to get voted off as podcast host after this. I don't know. Do you know? No. Oh, I thought you knew, and you're, like, waiting for me to come up with it. I remember it's purple. It's like a tea. What tea is it? It is a tea, but I, I don't know. It just says... Purple cone flower. Oh. I did write it So down. that was literally the, literally the answer, a purple flower. I, I remembered it was purple. But apparently, I it? just, the name was purple. Purple cone Does flower. it have the name? Did you write the name of the tea? I didn't. I didn't. I just wrote the just per- wrote. tea from the purple cone flower. There you go. Good job. Yeah, that was a tough one. 
What did Sully give Matthew to keep him from harm when looking for cloud dancing during the epidemic? It's a necklace with a pouch on it. Apologies to native tradition that I don't know if he names it as a specific. Yeah, I just remember that it has the pouch and it has like feathers on it. And that's a friendship something. Yeah. What was Robert E. recovering from when Michaela's mom came to visit for the first time? He had a burn. Bad burns. Yep. What animal? <laughs> what animal did Brian end up naming Byron? <laughs> the, I, I've said this too many times because I, <laughs> the way that I say it is very specific. <laughs> yes. I call it Byron, the female deer. <laughs> <laughs> the female deer, Byron. Also, someone, someone wrote in about this, too. I think it was the same person recently who wrote in in regards to the pig. But they wrote in that their frustration with this episode, which was, I think, Law of the Land. The A plot line was about the immigrants starving. And the B plot line yeah. was about Brian trying to save the life of an injured deer. And they wrote in kind of saying that they felt like the, the plot lines didn't work well together because you literally have starving people and you have a deer that you chose not to hunt. And I was like, that is an excellent point. And I feel kind of bad That's that we true. didn't we, notice that. <laughs> we didn't talk about how that was, yeah, an option for food at the time. Yeah, that's true. Who owned the deed to Michaela's homestead? That would be Byron Sully. Oh, you're wrong, actually. Wait, pause. <laughs> to the homestead? Yeah. Oh, Lauren. Okay, sorry, Lauren. It's Lauren. It's Lauren. There's a whole Lauren. plot oh, line Lauren. about that. <laughs> I know, I know. Sorry. I was just picturing when he takes her there and yeah. I mean, technically, you're technically you're not wrong. Like that was the whole discussion is that it was gifted to Abigail. Abigail and Sully, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't even in ownership. Who was in possession of the deed was Lauren. What did Harriet die of that Dr. Quinn could have saved her from? Harriet thought it was bad peaches. Dr. Mike discovered after her death that it was a appendicitis, burst, burst appendix, I believe. Yep. Wow. Way to go, Sarah. Good memory. What did Michaela keep from her luggage that ended up saving Sully's life in bad water? <laughs> yeah. You go. You, your fave. <laughs> The mirror helps distract the rattlesnake so he can chop its head off. Or he doesn't chop its head off, he just whacks it. Handy little piece of junk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What about this one? Who couldn't find Sully to deliver Colleen's rescue me letter in Heroes? We already talked about him. From Kansas, our boy, <laughs> Louis. Bing. Bing. Lewis, Lewis Bing. Bing. <laughs> what was Brian pretending to be when he got his head injury? <laughs> a bird. An eagle, specifically? And then a he's bird. like, I can fly. He's, he's been injured quite a bit all of a sudden, I'm realizing. <laughs> Guess that's what kids do. I think it's normal for small children to be injured. What's not normal is for small children to have multiple life-threatening injuries <laughs> maybe in the wild west but yeah the wild wild west in the television show we want the stakes to be higher and if it was like just <laughs> horace's blistered finger popping blisters it just would make dr mike less cool if she did more things like um, that <laughs> there wouldn't be a show to talk about that's for sure <laughs> Do you remember why Lauren needed a blood transfusion? I do. Because he had surgery on his guts. <laughs> yeah, but why would that mean? Why would he need a blood because of that? He lost blood from the surgery. Because he, he had a hernia. Correct. We're, on, we're down to the final two. What did Emily's husband die from? The flu. Also known as influenza, for those that didn't know. My famous quotes. Oh my gosh, that just killed me. That was so funny when you found that out. I was, I was dying. 
I like we I remember mom and dad had guests over. They had people over and I like went out and it was like, guys. I also I also it's talked right. to my friends and I was like, okay, I have a question. Do you know another name for the flu? <laughs> they were like influenza and I was like, dang it, I really don't know something that I probably should have learned a long time ago. <laughs> and last but not least. Who are? <laughs> now, let me just say that these questions were sent in by listeners, okay, not by us. The last question is, who are the best Dr. Quinn podcast sister co-hosts ever? Who are the best Dr. Quinn podcast sister co-hosts? Well, we're the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the only sisters. I mean, I think we are. Maybe, maybe there's one we don't know there's about. There's like an underground podcast yeah. we don't know about. That's true. Yeah. But of the, the Dr. Quinn podcast that I know of, we are the only ones. So thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> appreciate your support of our sisterness and Dr. Quinn and podcasting. We do. All right. Final tally. Who do you think won? Probably you. You win everything. <laughs> Do you want to know how much I won by, or do you want to just know that, yes, I did win? <laughs> oh, my gosh. If you're saying that, then that means that you got, like, many points over No, no, me. no. I, I, not many. Not many. <laughs> Four. Four points more than you. Well, that doesn't surprise me. I, I think we both have good memories, but, yeah, I just, there's some stuff that I'm, like, I don't remember that. And I knew that kind of going in, so can't blame you. My excuse is I have... PA school brain. <laughs> it's like that's that line in Narnia where it, it's in Prince Caspian where the brothers they're like, oh, we need to go this way by this ridge, mountain range, whatever, whatever. And Peter's like, that's the problem with girls. They never carry a map in their heads. And Lucy's like, that's because our heads have something in them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, good game, Kelly. Thank you for sending in trivia questions, those of you who wrote in uh, for our roundup. We really appreciate that. So thank you guys for sticking with us through our hiatus. This is officially the final chapter, the, the, the end of our journey through season one, which means we're very excited to announce that we will be coming back. Not a Lady will be returning, starting with season two. The first episode will be coming out on September 1st, 2021. So that is something to look forward to. We're going to talk about the race. I have no recollection of this episode, but Kelly assures me. You, you will love it. (laughs) That I'm going to love it. And I'm assuming it's because it's probably got horses in it. And it's really funny. Excellent, excellent. We're very excited for Kelly in that she is now doing clinical rotations. But what that does mean is that she's moving every couple weeks to go work and get experience at different clinics and hospitals. And I don't really know. I probably shouldn't be the one explaining this. But what that (laughs) means is you are literally going to be traveling to all different states every couple weeks to get that experience. So we can't guarantee that our episodes are going to be regular like we did with season one was the intention. It would be bi-weekly, which only got messed up, you know, when I moved across the world. But (laughs) part of me is like, no, I'm a podcaster. I need to be post regularly they need to know when it comes out but at the end of the day for us sisters to spend time together and I know that those of you who enjoy what we do are going to stick with us whether we are regular or not yep and we still obviously are going to try and do our very best to make it happen as we can so thank you guys for your understanding and yeah there's just been a lot of factors between PA school and moving and the time like there's like a massive time difference between us and then when I'm going to other states there's It changes the time difference. Yeah. There's been a lot happening. But we're planning and we're excited to come back. And an exciting part of our hiatus is that Not A Lady actually got picked up by an international radio station. So if you're into listening to the radio on on the web, because it is, it's actually an Italian-based radio station, but Not A Lady joined their lineup of podcasters and friends that play during their English hours. And so Not A Lady has been premiering on broadcast radio 
for the past couple weeks. I think they're up to episode four or five at this point. You can find links to that on our Facebook as well as Twitter and it's mentioned on Instagram. Go give that station some love give us some love and we're really excited to be connecting with new fans all over the world that's what i love about dr quinn all over the world in case you all have been living under a rock imdb tv and prime video just got more seasons of dr quinn when we started this it was only season one and i it's like they heard that we needed access to season two. And I'm so excited because it just became available. So if you are one of those people who didn't know where to find it, all the options, Paramount Plus has come out since we started this podcast. So I think like Canada, they have all the seasons on Paramount Plus. So Dr. Quinn, coming back. (laughs) You came to the right place, folks. You sure did and Looking forward to getting to hear from all of you as we start season two. And until then, we'll see you next time.